and Studios. This is 99.3 KITFM. Not cheese. And 1280 KITAM Yakima. Excuse me, 712. What am I going to put us back an hour? 712. It's a Wednesday. 66 degrees right now. It's the morning news. Good morning. I'm Lance Tormey. Dave Edel here. Jackson there. Yo. You where you are. Man. And, uh, we've got Bill Lover in the studio with us yeah. this morning. Councilman Lover. A uh, city councilman and a candidate under the new system for District 4. District Bill Lover, four. good morning. How you doing? How you guys doing? I'm fine. We're good. Good to have you here. Uh, we have uh, kind of a standardized little battery of uh, questions that we're asking everybody, Bill, as sort of the introductory round of uh, mm-hmm. chats. I know you've been uh, uh, talked to by the Yakima Herald Republic, a daily part, part of your life. life. Thank you. And uh, we want to... Uh, Give our listeners who aren't paper people uh, the same opportunity for just sort of a generalized uh, uh, opportunity to, to hear from you. And then uh, in the event you win the primary and move on, we will uh, have extended conversations, if you will allow. So uh, welcome aboard. Yeah. Thank you so much. Good morning. Hey, we had uh, we had your opponent in yesterday, Larry Breer, and we'll continue with these uh, all week. And, hey, thanks for coming in this morning, Bill Lover. And, um, I guess, first of all, just kind of tell us uh, a little about yourself, you know, your your time in the valley, your work, you know, what do you do, your family, just kind of let us know what's going on, although I think some of us kind of know what, what you do. <laughs> well, I'm retired. Yeah. But uh, before that, I spent uh, 23 years in the military. I was in the Marine Corps and the Air Force. Uh, I'm a Vietnam veteran. I, uh, after I got out of the Air Force, I uh, retired from the Air Force. After then, I went back to school. I graduated from uh, YBC in Central. The sun is out. That's me. Hold on. No, that's not me. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I, I then hired on at Boeing. Uh, I was a... Uh, 747 final assembly inspector, and I moved into manufacturing engineer on a 777 flight test program. I eventually retired from quality assurance management. Uh, I got four children, uh, only one still at home, and uh, I shouldn't say still at home, still in Yakima. I have one in China and one in Portland. Wow. Uh, both, of, both of them have uh, decided to work in international business, and they've been... Uh, They've been overseas quite a bit, probably about eight years between the two of them. China and Portland, two exotic, distant cities (laughs) where people are quite different from the rest of us. Okay. Interesting. That's right. Well, Bill, uh, and this, you're seeking what would be, um, uh, is is this a two year term for you then? This is a two year term. This would Mm -hmm. finish up the term I had been elected. Exactly, which was your second term. So you've already served uh, eight years, right? Ten years now? Mm -hmm. But the time this comes around. All right, so plenty of experience on the council already. Um, One of the questions uh, that is probably more uh, appropriate Mm -hmm. for uh, the new newcomers uh, than uh, someone with your uh, degree and level of experience, but but we are asking people um, uh, their understanding of the job of the council. Now, you've done it for a decade, (laughs) so uh, you should have a, a, a clear picture than most. I think a lot of people don't really understand the limitations on a council person and, and uh, what they can and can't do. So uh, for the folks tuned in, uh, share with them what your understanding of the role of the councilman is in our government. Well, certainly. Uh, basically, as we set policy for the city managers, city managers are only hired employee. Uh, we don't direct any of the other employees with anything. Uh, so we monitor him fairly close. Uh, we use a committee system. We use the uh, the mayor system. Our mayor is, uh, is is not a strong mayor, but he speaks for the uh, the council in many times uh, after he gets our approval and uh, and suggestions. And uh, other than that, we do it with a uh, a, a committee form of. I guess I'm going to call it a committee form of government. Everything normally goes through a committee. It's vetted there, and then it's decided whether it's going to come up to the council or go to a uh, study session. And, and in some cases, maybe uh, it's vetted out completely at those. And that's how it gets to the council. At that time, when the council approves something, 
it uh, it goes to the city management and and he fulfills those uh, that policy. I know a lot of the people that you know, Bill, um, that do business within the city. Um, they know the the system and and how it works and what what can and can't be done. The development committee and community and some of those folks. But in general, uh, would you say that the citizens at large really don't have a clear picture of what you do? I mean, they they have expectations of what you can do when when we're not empowered to do it. I mean, is it, would you say that's well, I fair? think they have a, an expectation that we have more power. Power than we do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once powers or once policy set, uh, yeah, we monitor it all the way through, and we have suggestions in the in between. But uh, policy will run its its course. Hmm. Bill, uh, you, you've had uh, what do you say, ten years now? Yeah. Ten years on the council. Um, you like this? Uh, I, I, you know, I guess it's. Uh, why are you running? Why well, are you running again? Well, you know, it, it's to finish up those last two years. Mm. Uh, I have some things that I really wanted to get done, and uh, and I'll get to them right now. I suppose I'm I'm really interested in a large swimming facility, and when I say a large swimming facility, I'm talking about the indoor outdoor type, and and probably attached to the YMCA. I'd like to see the uh, mechanical apparatuses there to uh, install an ice skating rink also, whether it's at the same time or in the future. And if they put it at the park they're talking about, I'd like to see about eight, uh, six to eight youth soccer fields. I, I don't think that uh, this is a problem with the grass there in that particular area. Won't be bothered with them uh, smaller kids. It's uh, the adult men that are tearing it up. Mm. So uh, you're running again for unfinished business then. Is that a fair way Correct. to put it? Correct, and you yeah. can put that soccer facility in there too. And mm -hmm. I do have some uh, ideas on a, on a road uh, a road bond, I'll call it that, but it will not increase taxes. I'm going to bring that forward here in another couple of weeks. All right. So uh, experience and ideas and more work yet to do uh, is how we would uh, characterize that to this point. Um, you know, you, you've done a lot, especially with your uh, all the quality control and the, uh, the logistical stuff and things that you, you did and your time in Boeing. Um, one of the questions we're asking folks is particular skills and abilities that they possess that they think make them an effective uh, council member. Uh, given your uh, background and, and your service, and we thank you for your military service, um, what uh, what do you think that uh, you bring to the table that 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 sets you apart from the, your challenges and makes you an effective council person? Well, I don't know if it sets me apart. It probably sets me apart from some of my council mates right now. I uh, no comment. Uh, <laughs> I, I really do want to vet something uh, uh, very deeply or honestly. I. Uh, uh, once a problem is established and, uh, or a policy established and uh, correctly, I like to get into the vetting process. I, I do not like rework, in other words, having to redo things. I think these can be vetted out at the beginning. However, given the time on council, a lot of times we don't get to vet as deeply as I think we should. And, and, and sometimes we end up doing rework because of it. But. Uh, uh, that's the normal trend out here in the civilian world. <laughs> Bill, uh, you, you've uh, how many how many years in the valley? Thirty-five years. Thirty-five years. Boy, I've, all those thirty-five years, I'm sure you found some favorites about the valley. Some of the great things about the valley. What do you think is the best thing about the valley? The 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 the, the, the thing that really enhances life here. Well, the best thing. You, you know, but nobody wants to say it much, but it's the agriculture and what the agriculture brings to this valley. I, I think that's what we're known for all over the uh, the Northwest and the, and the nation, as far as that goes. Uh, if you want to see some beautiful country and some uh, some real down to earth. Uh, agricultural type uh, industry this is the place to come and I don't think we uh, we broadcast that enough well I know that uh, you know ag tourism is uh, is going to be growing uh, it's already starting to make its way onto the map and, and we hopefully we'll see more of that because you're right it is the cornerstone of what we do well and along the way, uh, while we've made progress in a lot of areas, there are still challenges to uh, to be faced, Bill, and, and you know that from uh, seeing them come across your desk. Uh, what would you call the biggest challenges uh, facing Yakima that uh, ultimately council will have to uh, to bring its uh, thought processes to? Biggest challenges facing us today? Well, I, I, w I don't know if it... 
it's the council that's going to have to face this, and, and, and this is a pleasure. Right. This is a pleasure to uh, to face, really. Uh, and that's our agricultural industry. I mean, we're moving into a high tech area in agriculture. They're, they're going to be automated, computer controlled, and and robotics. I mean, this is going to open up a whole new industry for the for the valley, and we should be taking as much advantage of that as we can. I mean, it's going to involve everything from their field. Warehousing, storage, sales, supply source, even their transportation is all going to be integrated. These are going to be highly high-tech jobs. And that's what I think I, I uh, the, the problem I have with, with some of the jobs were, uh, or some of the industry we're starting to push right now. I, I think we should probably move over into that ag side and figure out how to get our kids into those uh, peritech schools. I mean, peritech has already seen this coming. They've uh, Well, you see the development of their new instrumentation thing? I mean, and, that's going to be right spot on, isn't and, it? And one of them is about uh, automated uh, ag equipment. Uh, these are careers. These aren't jobs. And, and, and what we're doing now is, is, is going to bring in a lot of jobs, uh, but not career-type jobs. They'll, they'll move from them jobs into to ag, and I hope we can just grab a hold of this opportunity as we see it. I mean, we can go right from high school to RY text. Uh, it's just a tremendous opportunity that's coming our way. KIT News Time is 7.23. For just joining us, we're talking with uh, Yakima City Councilman Bill Lover, who is running for uh, City Council in District 4. Bill, uh, some, some uh, I guess some more challenges, items are in motion. Uh, let's get your take on a couple of these items that are already in motion. Uh, first of all, your, your take on the downtown the plaza, the proposed plaza. How do you feel about that? Well, I've been pretty consistently against it. Uh, and my view is, is it's been out there quite a bit. I, I think it's too expensive. Uh, I don't think it's going to bring the uh, economic gain that we believe it will. Uh, if it does, it'll be those low and moderate jobs. And, and, and that's why I want to turn the focus mm -hmm. to what's happening in ag. I'd love to take that $7 million and put it into scholarships to send every kid we can from this valley to the to the high-tech schools that they're going to require in the future. Uh, the recreational ban on marijuana, how do you feel about that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I had a councilman tell me once that money isn't worth chasing. And he might be right. Uh, I think they put up so many uh, obstacles uh, uh, with regulations, uh, licensing, and, and controls that uh, I don't think it's going to be able to compete with the uh, what I call the dealer on the street until they figure out how to compete with them. I don't think they uh, are really going to overcome a whole bunch. There's also the problem I have with. Uh, um, with the federal side of it. It's against the law on the federal side. Okay, I'll bypass that. But would they please take it off the dangerous drug act, uh, list? They can do that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If they were to do that, I would probably vote for uh, uh, allowing marijuana in. It's, and, and that's a zoning problem to me, right. allowing marijuana in more than anything else. So no on recreational pot, all right? Public art. Public art. How do you feel about public art? We've got a number of public... Uh Art uh, things around Yakima, so well. Most of the public art wasn't funded by uh, by the government. Uh, I, I would think the one that's going on the uh, underpasses is going to be, right. and that was decided years and years ago. That money was set aside, and I'm talking about eight years ago, and it's just kind of uh, as the uh, agreements were being made, and as the uh, the uh, underpasses were being completed and such. It, it stayed there that whole time. That's, that art's going to go in. Mm -hmm. I, uh, expensive it is, but it's still going in. So do you support public art? Oh, I support public art. I, okay. have, a, I have a degree in art. Okay, great. Uh, he's, a, he's an artist. Right on. Yes. I was going to say, yeah, well, I, that's just... An award-winning artist. <laughs> right on, right on. Uh, the city's role in economic development. Well, I think I've, I think I've explained a lot of that. There's a, there's a, there's a lot we can do and a lot we can't do. We yeah. can set up the platform for success. And, hmm. and when I get back to that ag thing, when I talk about it, I, I don't know why we can't get a working relationship with some of the large agricultural companies and, and maybe look for a scholarship 
We also need to get with the the schools. I've been talking to Perry somewhat. They have a heck of a time passing their entrance exam. And maybe we do need some remedial uh, classwork on that. You know, and and we forget about Y Tech down there. We have Mm -hmm. that capability too. I just, uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to head. And uh, lastly, public safety. Public safety. How do you feel about public safety? Uh, what needs to change, or if anything? You know, I think we're on the right uh, right path, and I think we got the right processes in uh, in effect. I I think the city manager and the police chief have uh, organized a uh, a training campaign for professionalism and leadership that's going to give us the uh, the. Uh, promotional uh, capabilities to stay within our own department. Mm -hmm. Uh, And and I really believe our goal is, and and I've stated it before, we're going to be the best trained and the most professional police force in, uh, if not eastern Washington, in the state, uh, wherever they want to do the measuring. Last night they had another uh, one of those cookout with the cops up uh, um, in northeast Yakima, those kind of outreach programs. Mm -hmm. Uh, What's your take on those? you think those are effective? Uh, This is the coffee with the cops. It's kind of like that, only it's 8 to 9 and it's a hot dog. Okay. Hey, yeah. sure. What I see happening is just fine. We used to have the uh, the night out, and, mm-hmm. and and this is somewhat of the same thing with a different format. And, and I like it when the when the police get out, so they're going to find out we have some very uh, cordial, professional officers. One of the uh, um, reasons you sit before us today is because uh, Judge Rice's decision to uh, vacate, uh, calling it a mild inconvenience, Bill. You're just a mild inconvenience as to why you uh, have been uh, uh, dismissed from your duly elected office, which by state law you should be allowed to uh, finish your two terms. But, hey, given the greater good and the mild inconvenience and the fact that you can run again, here you are. But uh, our last questions have to do with the... Uh, ACLU suit, um, the uh, the appeal that's currently underway, uh, and the appeal of, uh, of, of of finances. What's what's your take on the ACLU lawsuit at this point? Well, well let's get back to to losing my two years first. You know. I- uh, that bothered me at first. It doesn't now. You know, I don't mind going in front of the public again. Uh, it's my biggest decision was to whether I wanted to go two more years. Now getting back to uh, Judge Rice's decision, uh, I think he made a decision with the uh, the information he had. Uh, I really uh, am glad that the Texas. Uh, opportunity came about. Uh, I see us getting possibly, well, there's a probability that we'll get all the money back that uh, Judge Rice told us we owe the ACLU, and owing them nothing would really make me happy. Uh, uh, I think the uh, seven districts is fine. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, uh, it may force some things, such as a strong mayor. We'll have to wait and see on it. Uh, uh, but we'll see how it operates. Uh, I think there's a lot of uh, a lot of problems on uh, uh, on how you're just going to represent one district. Uh, about, bottom line is, and we've all figured it out, it takes four votes. So uh, whether you think you're going to represent uh, one district or not, you're going to have to have three other districts with you. So, uh, and your thoughts of, uh, and you kind of addressed this now, I guess, yeah. uh, and, and this also is designed mostly for the, the people that were, uh, were coming on as first timers. Um, the potential of what, what could happen if, uh, if the Supreme Court uh, upholds the Texas case, uh, Evan Well, and what that might mean for districted elections here. Uh, uh, I don't know that anybody's addressed this. If, mm-hmm. if the, uh, if, if the Texas case uh, is upheld and, and the metric for dividing up by districts in the future is citizen voting age population, um, if you take a look at, at the uh, latest numbers from the auditor's office, and this was as of July, uh, citizen voting age population ranges in District 1 of uh, too short of 5,000 to District 4, uh, where you are, to uh, 7,676, all the way out to uh, District 6, which would be, uh, actually District 7 has the most out west, we're going to hear from those folks coming up. That's 9,823. That's about twice as many uh, citizen voting age people in that district as in District 1 and another uh, uh, 2,000 more in your district. 
Um, the concept of electoral equality does not exist under this scenario at all. Well, I think you're going to find from the Supreme Court, well, I hope what we find from the Supreme Court is it sides with us. And what we'll see is redistricting. Uh, how that will be done, we don't know. It could be as simple as they say, hey, this is a state problem. We're going to send it down to the governor or the state, and they're going to figure out how to redistrict. But, you know, the numbers are just uh, wild to me. I've been doing I'm doing a mailing right now. Yeah. And uh, here I have 7,000 people in the district. And I, and I made a survey, or I got the numbers on uh, how many uh, people have voted in the last two elections. Well, that was about uh, 1,200. But what happened when I took out the people that uh, lived at the same addresses, I'm only going to mail out 800 mailers, and, and that's based on registered voters. So, uh, yeah, we still have a uh, voter registration problem, don't we? We do, uh, and here's the range uh, of the people in District 1 who could vote uh, but aren't registered. 52% are registered, mm-hmm. and it ranges all the way up to 92% who are in District 6, 80% who are in District 7. Uh, so there's quite a range of uh, participation. And uh, it'll be interesting to see how under this historic scenario it all plays out. Bill, last word is yours. Um, uh, what, what you'd like to, you know, uh, you just said it very well, even though you'll represent the fourth when you win, if you win, uh, you still have to uh, work on behalf of the entire city. So all of you Yakima's listening in, what do you want them to, to know about this, uh, this stage of your uh, approach to service? Well, let me just talk to my district then at, uh, at this point. I think it's probably the most diverse district of, of all the districts. Uh, my boundaries go to D Street in the in the downtown area, all the way to uh, uh, Natchez Avenue. But when I come west, I go all the way to 42nd Street, and down south, I, I go all the way to Mead. This entire I have the jails, I have the hospitals, I have uh, the one of the biggest. Well, I have two high schools. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty diverse. Uh, it's, uh, In fact, uh, it's about, uh, well, I don't want to count it uh, racially because I I don't work that way. Uh, But if if there is a a Hispanic culture, I probably got about half of it in my lower district. So it's... It's challenging to me, so uh, I'm going to be able to work on a lot of things and probably promise a lot of things that maybe I won't be able to deliver just because of the other districts. Well, we wish you the best of good luck, Bill Lover. Thank you, Bill Lover. And we appreciate your time this morning. Again, uh, August 4th is the uh, tally of the election. Ballots go out really today, I believe, don't they, Lance? That's right. Start going out today. Arrive in mailboxes tomorrow and Friday. So uh, for early voters, you've had a chance to hear from Bill. And if not, uh, we're going to put this up on our website, this interview, so people can tune back in and uh, and catch it if they missed you, Bill. It'll be up there for uh, right up and through the primary. And then we, uh, we hope that in the event you win, we'll get you back in here for some more conversation, a little more detail as we move closer to November. Okay. Appreciate your time, sir. Sure. Thanks very much. 734.